So I stop my YouTube video or whatever, I, I make it quiet and I'm just like listening. And then on my staircase, I hear like a tiptoe down the stairs. And then this person, whoever they were, stops, observes that like there's a light on where I'm at, sees that there's like nothing down here really though. They take a few steps in, I kind of see the shadow. And at that very same second, I hear from upstairs, the person that lives up there, I hear, you know, what the fuck? It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. All right, y'all. On the request sheet today, my guy, Othman, he hit me up in the request area saying, brother man, thank you for all the entertainment you've been providing over the years. What I'm going to need to see from you is a nice, thick, brown gravied Canadian poutine. Alongside that, he was requesting a story time and he said bonus points for a fight story time. Now, I don't have a really intriguing fight story time, but I do have an adrenaline pumping story time from earlier this year in the summertime that I'll let you know once we get into it. But before we do that, we have to build a nice thick brown gravy and to do that we need to melt down a bunch of butter that's first off and then put in some flour for a roux and in order to achieve that we got to go in with quite a bit of flour gotta go lower all right heat is just barely on we do not want to burn the roux the name of the game is do not burn the roux Bit thicker, bit thicker. Baby food. Aim for baby food. Ask me why I'm doing it, maybe for extra flavor, but a bouillon jiggly cube. And then we gotta go in with our liquid beef broth. Now we gotta Bring that up together, slowly but surely. Okay, so my dude, for this part I was wondering, do I cut my own fries and keep the skins on and make them come out kinda, I don't know, maybe kinda half-ass. I just, I don't really love home fries. I figured no, let me go with the best fries ever to blast the stage in Canada. So I went with the flavor crisps, that's what we're gonna do here. I promise you, dude, these are the best fries absolutely ever and i personally am not a fan of home fries i just figured these would be the best bet for this video i swear they'll be so delicious but i'm gonna hit them with a bit of oil toss them get them all coated and then i'm gonna chuck them in the air fryer and the reason why i'm doing the oil coat is when you oil coat anything like these fries or wings or whatever, you just do an oil coat and then you put them in the air fryer. It's so close to deep frying. It's like the exact same thing, except for you don't have the oily mess. You don't have to get rid of a pan of oil and have the oil popping off at you and everything. So that's the move. All right, so into the air fryer. Gonna go like, gonna go about 15 minutes on Poor Hondo, as high as she can go. Let's get it. All right, here we go. Gravy is coming up. Nice and thick. Still needs a little more to go, but at this point, I am gonna season it with some pepper. It is already quite salty. But a good gravy does need some pepper. Like I said, these fries, they come out absolutely perfect. Look at this crisp on the outside, nice and golden. So crunchy. But let's plate this thing up. We don't need any extra salt because the gravy be salty enough. Okay, so this is a bit of an unorthodox move, but I'm gonna go in with the first layer and do a well proper cheese layering. Now this is also an orthodox mozzarella cheese but that's just there for extra good measure we have real squeakers cheese curds so we're gonna go in with curds in the middle proper curds 
and then we come on top with that second layer, right? Stack her up nice in the middle. And the reason why I'm putting this mozzarella in is I like when my poutine has a nice cheese pull to it. And that's something that you can't get with just the curds alone a lot of the times. So we stack it up, lots of cheese curds. Give it a little spin, make, th make sure things are nice everywhere. And that there, my friends, in my opinion for myself, is a beautiful, perfect, extra cheesy poutine. Let's eat it and tell a story. All right, yo, what up? What is good with y'all? Welcome to another, another <laughs> subscriber sponsored request. And this one goes out to my boy, either Othman or maybe Otman. I'm not exactly sure how to say it. I hope I don't butcher it, but I know I didn't butcher this. This one for you, my friend, is for you, my friend. So I hope you enjoy. I do have a story time I'm gonna tell you, but before we do anything more, we must pour. And today we're taking one out of the playbook of old Vartan Fresh. We're hitting his favorite Diet Coke, although I do not have a vase. He drinks out of a vase, a small flower vase. What a guy. If there's one thing I've noticed between the diet sodas is that Diet Coke has extra fizz time on it. I feel like it definitely has the longest of all the fizzes. Officially. <laughs> wow. What is my brain? I don't even understand myself half the time. All right. So we are coming up there. Like I said, in the making of the poutine, don't at me for having two cheeses in there. I do like a stringy matzo blend with my curds. Okay. But we need to have our inaugural Sipper also I have you guys close intimate for this one. This one feels like a close intimate one It's all right, okay Before we get into a bite and get into the tail, I don't want to waste too much time. He never said I couldn't have any ketchup I will use it sparingly But if you know me, you know, I'm gonna need a couple per bite squirts for this because I love ketchup on poutine, but we'll have it as seen on TV straight up right away. Okay, first bite. Where do we go? Right to a cheese curd. Just dive right into the middle. So he wanted a very specific C, and that's a thumbnail, is really what that is. But that's what I was going for, my guy. That's exactly what I wanted for you. A nice, cheesy. Perfect pull. Look at that. That's amazing. That's going to be something else. So I didn't add any salt to the gravy because the bouillon packs and the, and the salty beef broth itself was already enough. I just added pepper. That's all she needs. Perfect. Okay. Here we go. That, my friends, is, I just want to show a cheese curd in its, in its state of curdiness. 
courteous courteousness. You know, it just kind of melts. But it remains with that chewy gooey. That's what's up. Okay. I'll say one thing this reminds me of high school, but leveled up. And then we got to tell you this adrenaline inducing story from this summer. So my man was requesting for a fight story. I don't know that I have any more that are worthy of telling really. Um, you know, I fought X amount of times in my life, like seriously. And I'm pretty sure I've told those on the channel already. So I'm going to tell you this story about home invasion this summer while I was home. And uh, I'll start from the very beginning. So basically, I acquired a house in April of 2020. And uh, the area that I acquired it in isn't the nicest area, but it's not the worst area. There's definitely families, you know, older people, just standard working people. But the area itself also has a lot of like of the disenfranchised people, um, a lot of homeless, a lot of drug addict type people walking around. So it's a mix. So I move into the place in the spring and I have a corner lot. So I'm exposed on the side of the road basically. And I have a, a pretty main road that my corner is on. Like my house, my backyard basically, my driveway, my yard, back deck, shed, back of the house is really quite exposed off this main road. So over the next month or two, I start noticing cars parking on the main road beside my house and across the street beside the other house. They pull up, people get out, they walk down a back lane or they go around the front. They disappear for about 15 minutes, come back, take off. I observed this for a while, eventually to find out there's a drug house, like three uh, houses down with the block next to me, basically. I need some ketchup. So, you know, I'm like, as somebody who's been that guy before, gone to pick up drugs places, um, I'm not condemning anybody because I've done my fair share in the day and I've had to go to places to get drugs. Um, it's however unsettling when it's your house is basically where they park. Well, they pick up. So as it gets deeper into the summer, warmer weather, Come June, the foot traffic starts picking up. So now there's cars and people coming in through the back lane by feet all hours of the day. I'm talking 6 a.m. to 6 a.m., right? It's party time. Everybody's picking up. And you can imagine the type of people that are picking up. Not exactly the most, you know, 
honest citizens of the world. So my you know, I'm just on kind of high alert really for where I'm living in my area at this point. Uh, and it be, because it's summer, I want to enjoy like I have this back deck. And so get a patio set, set it up. My, my backyard looks nice, but it's exposed. And the fence to my yard is about five feet in height. So it's an easy hop, wooden fence. So on that side of the house, there's this one big window that go that opens out like this and goes into a den. My patio set is right beside that. So I have someone living upstairs, right? Renting out the top. And uh, I was noticing that the window was getting left open quite a bit. And so I was like, yo, that's that window. Just make sure like that's got to be closed. Like anytime you leave or at night. We, that has to be closed because it's it's basically an invitation, right? It's big enough for a body. It's low. The chairs are right there. Anybody could hop up, hop in. Next thing you know, we're getting robbed. So one night, and this is fairly early in the uh, what's going on in the world. I don't even want to say the words on here anymore. I'm on a YouTube schedule. I, uh, you know, it's summertime. Also, just I was just freely drinking quite a bit. So I'm down in my spot. And at this time, because it was so new to the house, I had nothing in my, like, main room. My, like, living room. Like, nothing. And I had everything behind these closed doors in my room, which I immediately put a lock on my door. Because I've just always been the type of person... to have a lock on their room door. I can't sleep peacefully without a lock door on my room. This has to be. So, I had been having a few drinks. I was buzzed. I wasn't like drunk drunk, but I was buzzed. And it was about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. And I'm laying around, I'm kind of listening to stuff on my laptop, whatever, YouTube. I didn't really hear anything, which is surprising because I can usually hear the person upstairs, living upstairs, go to and from the bathroom and doing stuff because it's kind of an older house. I can hear some rickety creakety steps. So the fact that I didn't hear any steps was like, man, this person was light and stealth. But all of a sudden, uh, the lights out here, and I have like this frosted glass on my door, the lights down here outside of my room flick on, flick off, flick on. And that's because there's both a light switch down here, but a panel up at the top of the stairs near the back door. And they were flicking the panel lights and then they flicked the, this one back on, so on, off, on. And I was like, that's strange. And this is like uh, in the middle of the night and who, who lives upstairs is on like a nine to five schedule. So it didn't make sense for them to be up doing anything other than maybe like getting laundry or something. So in my head, I'm like, oh, maybe they're just getting laundry, but this is weird. So I stop my YouTube video or whatever. I, I make it quiet and I'm just like listening. And then on my staircase, I hear like a tiptoe down the stairs and then this person, whoever they were, stops, observes that like there's a light on where I'm at, right? Probably heard the sound stop. Sees that there's like nothing down here really though. They take a few steps in. I kind of see the shadow. And at that very same second, I hear from upstairs 
the person that lives up there, I hear, you know, what the fuck? And then at that moment, I yell out from my room, no doors open yet. I'm like, yo, are you good? And then as soon as that happens, this person, whoever was here, I hear them like scurry up the stairs and then I fling open my doors. And I come busting out to the stores, to the stairs to, to go up, to go to the back door to see what's happening. And as I enter up this way, right here, from the top stairs, there's like a, a staircase that converges, like there's a landing and a down, and then this comes up in a landing, and then the back door. So as I'm coming upstairs, this guy who was at the bottom of my stairs, he was already on the way out, out the fence because I had the back light on on the deck. So I see the tail end of that guy, he's already out of the yard. And then this guy, I, out of the peripheral of my eye, I can see him. He's boogieing around the corner from the kitchen off the landing. He hops out of the door. Right as I'm about to get to him, I can almost grab him. Like I just touched the back of his shirt, but he was already just too far gone. Boom, hops the fence and jets. And uh, I'm like, I'm just, you know, you're in that moment. It's just, you're heated. You're like, whoa, this is like, you know, just it's, it's confusing more than anything. But you understand that you're like getting robbed or whatever. Hops the fence. As soon as he hops the fence, I look on the other side of my fence. Three o'clock in the morning, in the dark. No one else out. There's this old man with white hair. And I'm like, he goes... Oh, I just saw a guy uh, trying to get into your house from your backyard from a chair. And uh, he's like, he, he ran down the alleyway. You could go get him. And I'm like, well, he's gone now. But like, what are you doing out here? Is what I said. And he's like, uh, and he kind of stumbled. And he's like, oh, just coming from a bar. And then I'm like, but this is, and this was in first like real lockdown of Corona. Like we weren't allowed to go to bars. Bars were done. Bars were closed. I'm like. I was like, bar, there there are no bars. It's corona, like it's lockdown. There's there's nowhere to be drinking right now. He's like he's like, Yeah, I'm just walking back. I live in the area. So I'm just like, okay, man, thanks. Basically, like I didn't further up on him because I was just so like, gotta go check on what's happening inside. And uh checked around, could smell cigarette heavily nothing was stolen nothing was missing i go out to the patio to look to see what happened exactly what i thought happened chair against the window dude came in the window and he left a cigarette burning on my table and it burnt into the table and it was like smoking plastic and cigarette. that's why i could smell like just such a gross smell so person goes upstairs Tells me their account of it. Basically heard some skulking around. Kind of had the same thoughts as I did. Like maybe one of us is like just doing some fuck shit. I don't know. Like whatever. And uh, from their perspective what happened was someone came into their room in their door. And they were on their phone. And they could, because of the light of the phone they could just see somebody. And when that person from the door saw that there was somebody in bed with like that was awake. Uh, the like the perpetrator or whatever was like oh uh, sorry sorry and just tried to play it cool like it was just like somebody vis like who was like, visiting the house like just tried to be like not like sketchy just like oh sorry sorry and just close the door and then uh, that's about the time when I heard the what the fuck and then I came upstairs and then they all like everybody just ran out and 
so we debated like do we call the cops or what like because nothing was stolen or anything so we did just to make it known that it happened and and make it known that like just to watch for it in the area or whatever so the cops came over um they're like yeah this happens like all the time around here basically there's like drug houses and there's like uh like like a gang around here that that steals shit and they're like we're working on it we're working on like taking them down basically and uh i was like yeah there's this old man kind of on watch out i think and they're like oh uh yeah he's pretty notorious to like come out to the car and we'll show a picture and do you know him so they i come out they show me a picture of this other old man who's like notorious for this shit and uh, I was like, no, that's not him. Anyways, the cop, the one, the main one that I dealt with ended up being my childhood doctor's son. So we were just laughing about that. And then, uh, yeah, basically nothing ever came of it. Just they get away, blah, blah, blah. But about a week later, I see the old man from outside. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. Maybe you do live in the area. Fair enough. But maybe you're also in cahoots with these young dudes, right? You all do drugs or whatever together, or maybe you're just in for the score. Maybe you're like, you know, I know the area. I'll watch the area when it's time. I'll hit you up. You guys, the young guys, you go in and we'll split up. Like, like I'll get a piece because you guys go in. Like, that was my thinking. Because it just didn't make any sense for that old dude to be out there. The one, one person outside just happened to be right at my house to be out there to, to get, like, busted. Because it looked like nobody was home, right? I didn't have a vehicle at this point. So no car in the driveway, all dark. The grass was pretty grown in. Probably thought nobody was home. Only to get chased out by me. And then that old man was like struggling for a lie. So I see him and I'm like, all right, I got you. So I tailed him. <laughs> he walked by my place. I came out, put on my shoes, and I tailed him behind him for like three quarters of a, like a block behind. And I just watched where he went. I watched and I watched him go into his house. And he does live in the area. He lives right right by me. And then I just like surveilled his house. For like 20 30 minutes i went to the back lane checked out the backyard kind of had a little peep in the window from the back lane just to see like what his vibe was and i'm still undecided whether or not he was involved or not if he was just happened to be there or if he was involved i'm not sure he doesn't seem like the type now that i've surveilled him <laughs> but I also wouldn't put it past him. Now, another funny thing with that old dude is he didn't know that I surveilled him, right? He didn't know that I followed him. He didn't know I checked his house up. Another day, he was walking by my driveway, and I've never seen him eye to eye since that time. This is like months later. I'm pulling in my driveway, and he's crossing the driveway. I'm going to pull in, and we look at each other dead square in the eyes. And I just grilled him hard, like, just like, almost indicating, like, I know what you did, motherfucker. I, I know. And he, like, you could, you could, like, see the guilt in his eyes, though. Like, you could see that he knew that I knew. And I just grilled him the whole time until he finally had to look away from me. But we stared at each other. And he knew that I knew. So, that's almost confirmation. But anyways, 
I will say this, there was two things that happened to me from that. Number one, I was on edge probably for, if I'm honest, about two weeks after that. And that's because I have just, you know, never had to, I don't want to have to fight somebody and like hurt somebody or anything or even deal with somebody having the audacity to like come into my fucking house that like is supposed to be my sacred zone. Like it's like I own it, I bought it, paid for it. You know what I mean? Like it's like how dare you come into my place and try to take my shit and try to put like shit at risk and like just that energy too. It's like on one half of me, it's like I'm angry. Like I want to fuck you up. But also it's like I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to get in a fight and like get stabbed or some shit. Like, you know, I don't want to catch a body and go to the bin for no good reason. Because in Canada, you really like, unless there's forced entry and they, you can like prove that they were trying to kill you and shit. If you hurt somebody in your house, you're likely going to jail. So it's really fucked up here. And in that instance, there was no break and entry. It was just basically slide through a window. So it doesn't look forced at all. So anyways, I just had all these ruminating thoughts. And then when I'm chilling at home for the next little while, I was always listening for shit. And I was like, are they going to come back because they know the lay of the land now? Because like once you've been in the house, it's like, you know, the escape routes, you know where everything is. Da, 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 da. So I didn't know if it was like planned out and if they wanted to come back or if it was just a one off, like I'm kind of fucked up. Let's it looks like we can break in here right now. It looks like nobody's home. Let's just do it. See if there's anything. Get the fuck out. So. Obviously, they 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 never came back. I've never had another incident. I did, however, buy myself some uh, some weapons to keep in my room just in case <laughs> if anything happens like that again. So I'm a little more prepared now than I was. But really, it was just, it's just a one-off thing, and it was mainly because the window was left open, so it was just like a, an open invitation to be to just an easy, easy access, come in, maybe steal some shit and get out and get, sell it, get your drugs or whatever. Another thought that crossed through my head, which was like a little unsettling, but seemed a little unreasonable, but not like it couldn't happen. And that was, I was like, cause I had put a picture up of my yard on Instagram and it's like, I'm not huge on YouTube or anything, but I've said enough times about where I live. And now that I live in like Toronto was like hard to find people. It's hard to find people in Toronto, but where I live now wouldn't be that hard. Smaller town, blah, 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 whatever. So in my head too, I was like, maybe like, is it possible that some weirdo from the internet caught wind of like where I'm at? that lives here and then just kind of came through and was going to act a fool and be weird. I was like, did I like, that was kind of playing with my mind. Cause that actually happened to Ben Dean. Cause that actually happened to Ben Dean in Korea. He got held up at knife point in his apartment. And then the guy found him through YouTube and wanted to steal his identity. <laughs> so that shit's crazy. And he was traumatized by that and disappeared off YouTube for like a while and then came back and I like told the story of it, which is crazy. So my head kind of went there too. I was like, I was like, is somebody, is this some weirdo out there like trying to get at me? But that wasn't the case. <laughs> but anyways, I don't know, a bunch of weird thoughts go through your head when that happens, when people just ent enter your home <clears throat> in the middle of the night, unbeknownst to you, <laughs> right? Without your permission. You're uh, certainly put in a different headspace after for a while, a little, a little less naive to the world, right? So that night, that had my adrenaline pumping for sure. That was that was a thing. So it took me a couple of weeks to get back to like chilling normal, but for a while I was I was ready to bust heads at any moment. <laughs> Anyway, brother, I hope you enjoyed the story, the actual poutine coming together. 
that's a lot for my belly. It's really rich. Couldn't take the whole thing down, but you know, it's the attempt that matters, right? <laughs> All right. Till the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well. Stay true.